Okay, we're doing um, chapter four, review number 51. This is the second derivative test, so I need the second derivative. I don't, I mean, the way this is formatted, it's not, uh, taking the product rule is sort of a waste of your time. I would just go ahead and um, distribute this in. Because it's very easy to get to the second derivative. 4x minus 8x cubed. 4 minus 24x squared. Yeah, it's just uh, that's just way easier to do if we just um, simplify that. All right, now um, uh, for the second derivative test, you need the critical numbers. So I'm now going to factor this to... Uh, x squared. Uh, that's not easy to factor. Okay, we're stuck solving it anyway. So we can see so far one of the critical numbers are going to be zero. We have to get these other two. All right, so we're going to do one minus two x squared equals to zero, or one equals to two x squared. We'll divide the two off. We'll take the square root. So x is going to equal to, if I just simplify that, that's um, radical 2 over 2 if you want it rationalized. You know, I did something in my head, and let me just say it out loud. Uh, I looked at what the domain was, and this is a polynomial, so the domain is all real. Because again, you can't have a critical number that is a domain restriction that they would you don't test a domain restriction so i sort of like looked at that real quick said oh no domain restriction so i wouldn't throw away any of my critical numbers all right now you're going to put the critical numbers into the second derivative right so that now the critical numbers go into the second derivative all right so when you plug in zero you get four it's not, uh, the significance is not the 4. The significance is that it's positive, right? So if it's greater than 0, that means that it's concave up, uh, which means it's a relative minimum at 0. And I want you, if it, uh, I want you to find the actual xy coordinate. So remember to do that. You go back up here and you plug in x is 0. And you can see if you plug in x is 0, you're going to get 0 times 1, which is uh, 0. All right, there's the first answer, and this was the work I'll be looking for on the test to see this step's real important. All right, now because the plus or minus radical 2 will give the both, they'll both be positive or they'll both be negative because it's x squared here, I can just do that in one shot. They're both going to be the same. Uh, they're both either going to be maxes or mins, the way the equation looks. Right, because you're squaring it, the negative's going to go away. So this squared is going to end up being positive 2 over 4, or 1 half. Oh, I would have just rather written it 1 half. This little math people. I usually don't consider myself like a uptight math person, but, but yeah, I guess here I want to see it a certain way. So then 24 times a half is negative 12, so this is negative 8. And again, it's not so much that it's negative 8, it's that it's negative. Since it's less than 0, it's concave down, which means that you have a max. All right, so you have a relative max. Now let me just look at the original equation. All right, you're going to get the same scenario because this is squared and this is squared. The plus or minus is insignificant. They're both going to give the same answer. So um, plus or minus radical 2 over 2 is going to give the same answer for the y value. So um, we'll just go ahead and plug it in. Let me just see if I can squeeze. So I'm plugging it in here. It's a little, I'm plugging it in here, okay? Okay, so um, g of plus or minus radical 2 over 2 equals to... Let's see here. So 2 times plus or minus radical 2 over 2. Uh, 
quantity squared and uh, times one minus radical two over two quantity squared. Oh, this might be two squished. All right, so this would be two times, this would again be of two over four or a half, and then that would be times one minus, that would again be the two over four or one half. So it looks like it's two times one half times one half, um, which is one half. Ah! Okay. Not sure how I feel about that, but but that's that's your relative max. Okay, so relative min, relative max. I hope I didn't squeeze that too much. You're okay. You can sort of figure out what I what I did there. All right, gang. Hope that helps. I'll catch you. Bye bye.